Races at the Red Bull ring never go completely smoothy. There's something about its oval-like characteristics. And I know it's not an oval. There's plenty of corners compared to NASCAR's two or three. But it's almost like it's this big draft train with limited corners compared to most events. And because of that, the racing's always pretty epic. You get to slipstream up behind people. But because everyone is in these big groups, unless they break away from each other, like I said, things never go completely smoothly. We're at the Red Bull Ring here in this video, and the carnage, for this time around at least, worked a lot in our favor. So we're on the grid here, green lights, and I didn't have this issue in the actual game itself. Just a recording that it lagged. I'll let the first corner play out for you guys. You got a slow car on the left. And there we go. Austria turn one. Three wide there. Our dude said, I wasn't entirely sure where everyone was, but we stuck still and straight. And look at this. We're ahead into the first couple packs. Some door banging behind us. But here we go. Austria. Flat one. We've survived the first corner at least. And now it's all about just staying with these first guys in front. Now, the Porsche Cup car, if you ever do drive this here, this corner here, technically turn four, I believe, even though cars don't worry too much about turn two on this track. Oh, man, the Porsche gets so wild. And here, um, you know, it doesn't have that braking assistance, plus the, the rear engine uh, can make this car get really, really wild and cause a lot of understeer which this corner already induces in most cars as it falls away from you. So, first lap coming to a close here, and we have a nice little gap from the positions behind us, fifth onwards because of the door band. Number three goes really wide here, but he gets on in time, and this is going to cause us a little bit of drama as he holds us up, still trying to get the best run we can. It's all about not letting the first couple cars here get away from us, because if you get out of that... 1.5 second range that, that tends to be where the draft falls off fifth place caught right back up to us here as that we got held up a little bit and sixth behind him as you can see in the relative box down the bottom right we got 0.4 seconds to pull in front of us 0.4 behind 0.2 behind him so it's all pretty close and like i said you're getting about you get slipstream up to about 1.5 seconds distance generally with eye racing in the cars. So we're just trying to keep around that window. I don't know the exact number it is. But either way, sticking close to these guys, but not too close. Hopefully that they hold us up and we can't really make a pass. It's really like line it up and make a jump. The best place to pass on this track, the corner previously to this one. Uh, that really, really tight turn three. We see Paul's got his pace back up again. It's going to help us a lot, actually, as we uh, chase around. Trying to manage this corner. Everyone's got different lines in that previous corner there. Some You can see they really go out wide and crack it in. Um, the, the best lap that I saw didn't do that, and that's the line that I try and follow. Or I don't think so, anyway. But we don't seem to lose too much time either way, and I think it's a safer way to go about it. There's a nice old off-track. Really trying to smash the throttle as it dips down there to get a good run into the draft zone because up across the start finish line here and around turn one up the back straight there, really, really crucial. I mean, there's so much draft in this track, isn't it, compared to most. We just had one slipstream zone. We're into an even greater slipstream zone into the, one of the best overtaking parts of this track. Although I don't think I pass too many people here in this corner. I do it... Um, and, spoiler, I do pass some people in this track, in this race, into a corner that normally I wouldn't try and do it into, but it's just how the cookie crumbles in this race. So hold on to it. We've got a 17 lap race, I believe. Um, it's about half an hour, and they work it out from there. No pit stop, so it's just a sprint race, and they seem to be really fun in iRacing. Well, fun, but also more carnage enabled normally as well. Again, it's that tricky corner. You see those guys, they break right on the red and then nip it as they try and... So I think that, that was quick for him there. Paul did that really well. He pushed it right to the limit now that I'm studying this, this back. And that's a 
the biggest benefit to recording your races, isn't it? So look over these small details. That there's no way I can critique that midway through the race when I'm trying to worry about, you know, every corner in my own way. Much better on that corner this time around. Into the final, hit the dip, and we're right on his tail again. Meaning, if we can line up a nice draft here and get a good turn one, kind of got a nice opening for a pass into the best passing corner in this track. You see, first and second have got the same idea, or second has the same idea for first place. Really trying to line him up, but doesn't look like he's quite close enough. Sticks his nose out to the inside just to scare him a little bit, but doesn't go for the dive. Really coming in hot to that corner, but it worked in our favor. As we are now pulling away from fifth again. They're towards one second away from us now. And we're just staying in a nice group of four at the front. Getting the slipstream. Getting away from the battle pack that's probably ensuring down behind us. Now, we both have a huge driver into this turn. I nipped the sand. Could have been much worse. But like I said, the Porsche Cup cars there in that corner. Just struggle so much with the, just how they're set up and the assists that they don't have. The two trickiest corners to get right, uh, I think, in this track. They're not, they're not completely, they're not brutal. They're not like a Bell Isle or a city track where they have cement walls that if you get it wrong, you know, you've, you're actually in trouble. But you just lose a lot of time if you don't really nail it. And that seems to be because of these big straights. As you can see, Paul's had a mishap on those last two corners again. And we're getting frame rate on these corners again. And, and that's just caused us to catch up. To be able to go for a pass. Hold it inside. Down to second this time where we normally hit in third. Just to guarantee that we've got the spot. And we are through into third. Very unexpected. We're watching first and second up ahead. And again, he's really close this time. And this time, it looks like he's going for the pass. He loads up the inside of him. Left side. But the next it doesn't look like he exactly Clear. had it under control. Now, the side by side again. Uh, the guy behind us now, it's also past Paul. Yeah. Trying to have a go on us in the midst of all that. So he's holding the inside, making him go wide, and he couldn't do it. But this battle for first and second is now ongoing. We've got big skid marks off into the sand here. A couple of them. So we've had some other cars back in the pack have some trouble turn four. And the lead has been exchanged. We now have, I believe it's Vincent. Let me make my preview screen a little bit bigger. Oh no, I'm not even going to pronounce <laughs> who's leading the race. But uh, we have Dirk that was leading. Now dropped down and within two seconds of us. 1.8. Now that is slightly bigger than what we would like to be able to catch up. So you can see I'm going to try and push on these guys now. And we've got uh, Gianluca, I'm going to try and pronounce his name, behind us, 0.3 seconds. So he's really putting the heat on us. He's already had a crack trying to pass us once already. We're now in third place. You can see he's all over us into turn one. Making sure we get a decent exit so that we can get a good run here and he not close the gap and get a pass. Turn one there, being a huge problem for first place. That would have been nearly a, a, a uh, time, you know, give back the time um, type deal because he went so far off, but definitely an off track. Gave Dirk in second place. A bit of an exciting moment to try and get him back into the turn where he made it all happen only a lap ago. That's not the way that it went. Now, we've actually knocked off 0.8 of a second because of first place moment into turn one. And this is looking really good for us. I'm paying careful attention to that relative box. Just trying to do our own race. Keep an eye on the guy behind us, although he's lost a little bit of time. And here, second place, Dirk there. Doing what I thought would happen if you have a slight mistake into their wider line. So the line I'm taking, maybe they do gain a 10th there. Although we didn't qualify particularly bad against these guys. But I think the risk of that gain in time, it was not worth it. I, I'm not sure, even if it is quicker, I'm not sure I'll do their line. Just because you can see if you're going deep into a corner, you know, going out real wide and cracky into a car that's known to understeer, 
You're already wide, mixed in with understeer. You're out in the middle of nowhere. And that is not how we want it to go. Now we are right on the tail. Half a second away. Definitely in the slipstream. And again, the top four in this battle. He's trying to put in nice, clean lines. If you look behind the guy behind us, though, Drake and Paul, there's been some battles occurring in the top couple places. Um, Keep it together, and Drake, Drake must be really pushing him and Paul. Oh, coming in really hot again. A mistake. Going to cost us some time if we can't grab hold of that wild car. This is starting to kind of form up a little bit here. Looks like Drake and Paula had uh, actually a bigger moment than we thought. And now they've got quite a gap. So when they're just getting the mix into the top four that we've seen this whole time, now they've now lost it. Yeah, definitely. The 2.1 seconds from us now. Meaning they're nearly out of draft range on the guy behind us. So it's all on for third place here. Second and first in a big group. Trying to get these exits right. Old Dirk's gone wide again. Well, many Porsches going wide again. again. Look, turn one, loading up on the inside. Ten laps to go. We're going to prop it on the inside. Put it in second. Allowing him to not try and get the undercut on us. Or the over-under. And the guy behind us, twice he's done that as I watch this replay back. We make a pass and he makes sure that he comes with us. So really good driving from this guy. And he will be a big dive bomb. You got it, Blake Carroll. You want to right. the next stack behind me. Oh, they've always piled up. They've all just piled up. And again, I forgot what lap that happened on. I knew it happened in this recording. And this happened, for, like I said, I recorded this a little bit of time ago. So, oh my god. Even in the video then of the recording, I said, this one's going to make it on YouTube. Because what is the chances? Yeah, There's a massive man, battle behind us. They're banging doors, dive bombing in each other. First place spins it on himself. And everyone gets caught up in it. We are now... 2.4 seconds in the lead. Isn't that going to be good to watch back on the replay? So now it's a matter of 10 laps, 9 laps now. Can we just keep a nice steady pace, keep this gap as we get wild, and you can see the tyres starting to really feel it with all these right-hand turns in the Porsche Cup car. We're in first place. In one of the most random moments I've ever seen okay, in a racetrack where, you know, maybe a podium spot was on the horizon, but now we've just been handed the lead. More early than I would like it, I would like to uh, also remark here because now we've got to hold it. Now we've got, what is it, 19 other cars hunting, hunting us. The pressure is on. Watching into the hardest corner on the track. Got it okay. And you can just see, you can just, if you watch the yellow bead or the yellow color on the top of the steering wheel going into that corner, I want you to pay attention to it next lap around. You can just see how loose the front end gets, how the track falls away, and it, it's, um, yeah, just the weight distribution really struggles. Still holding that two second gap. Now, the biggest problem with having the lead with this many laps to go is we need to keep in mind the reason why this track, you know, results in such chaotic races sometimes is because it's just slipstream central. There is just a draft train. And who's making that draft and the one not benefiting from it? It's the dude in first place. You've got all these guys behind you getting a hole in the air broken for them. So they have less wind resistance and they get to get slingshotted up behind you. And we're just watching now on that relative board down in the bottom right. 
one point seconds now to second place. Here's a two second gap behind him. Which, luckily enough for him, means he does not have the problem that we have. He is purely on the offense. No need to defend because the guys behind him are not in that beneficial slipstream. And he is definitely, definitely hunting to get into ours if he isn't already. Now, even though I feel like I'm doing that turn pretty well, it seems as though, although this lap he hasn't as we watch a relative, it seems as though he catches us every single lap on that corner. Again, it looks like he has knocked a tenth off, actually. We nearly run wide. Very easy to do here on these double left-handers. Every lap. And I've watched closely on how he was gaining so much time on us. It's just incredible on the brakes. Is all I could gather from it. And I think we'll, we'll see some of that in the replay later. Uh, of, at the end of this video. When we watch the crashes over. Here we go. Nice clean line. Pretty stable last two corners. Keeping the nice gap that we have. This lap being a 132.9. Not a record lap. Probably won't be anymore as we don't have that beneficial slipstream. Oh, loose turn one. The tyres are feeling it. And the kerb really knocking. I, I mean, these cars are quite good on the kerbs. But you never know. They can catch you off guard and punch in the throttle too much. Especially out of this corner here. Very gentle, under half throttle, and then as it steadies, onto the full. More drama back. Must be turn one. Oh, and that is the name I can't pronounce, and now that I've watched this replay back. At one stage, he was the leader of this race. What a race he is having. Put your mic out of your mouth, please. <laughs> Put your mic out of your mouth, please prick. I believe that was that what was said. So with all the drama unfolding back into turn one and four. Well turn one and three, so and four. That's where all the drama happens, let's be honest with it, boring. But but uh, the first two major turns in this track, causing mayhem for a lot of drivers here. Somehow not getting off track on that very wide second last corner. And we're just pushing it at this stage. We're under what, five laps to go now. Still managing that nice gap. Yeah. Just keeping Albericki. I believe his last name is. We're trying, boys. We're trying. Just be careful on select. It's uh, push, pushing everywhere. Just trying to keep him at bay. Because if he gets another two tenths on us, one now. He's definitely going to start, which he has got, which he's got a lot of there. He nearly got down to point one, one point three somehow. He just had a crazy first corner there, or break into. Like I said, he's really good at a break. So I, I saw in a when I watched his um, driving style after the race, and I always recommend you do that. If you know someone that was driving exceptionally well, and you're trying to work out exactly how, don't just say like, "Oh, they're a good driver." You get the replay. You've got access to viewing exactly what everyone else is doing at the end of the race. So, while it's good to watch crashes, and they're always fun and I always do watch that, don't forget to always at least watch first place. Just a couple of their laps to just see how they were managing the car, what kind of line they had. Maybe find their fastest lap and watch that back over to see just how they did it. It's always beneficial. You can never learn enough when it comes to this game. There's always little tricks on different tracks ways to get the most out of every car. Now we've had a pretty cruisy last five laps to be honest. Keeping second place at bay, just putting in some nice laps, not making any major mistakes, but if we look closely, every time we get around to this draft zone we are in right now, that one point something number is getting a little bit uncomfortable so it briefly touched 1.2 seconds and guys remember I said under 1.5 seconds you will benefit from draft in iRacing if you have a straight long enough and we are on one of the biggest circuit 
road circuit, drafting courses there is. And if we look again, just really good under brake. Second place is now 1.1 seconds behind us. Everyone else, way too far away. Six seconds behind that has just been carnage and drama for them, which we will have a look at what happened uh, in the incidents at the end of this race. But for right now, it's head down. We need to keep the biggest gap we can to this guy because he's in draft range. Now, the closer he gets, the more powerful it gets. The more recent that was the hole in the, the wind or the air for him has been broken. Getting really loose now in the last two corners. Still 1.1 seconds. Trying at a good exit. We're going a little bit wide though. Could cost us a tenth as we're watching. Second place. Nearly tapping one second mark. He did ever so briefly. There it is. One second away. He had a good exit. And he's good under brakes. It's ever so getting to point nine now. Here comes the major draft zone. Four laps of racing to go. With a man that's been on a hunt this whole time, making very strategic passes. Every time we would make a pass, he would kind of slip himself through there as well. And our first major mistake. And off track with second place, 0.9 seconds away from us. With that error, now 0.8. So he hasn't had the fastest of all fastest corners there. Seeing that we went off. Tires are getting worn. You'll see the steering input getting more wild. Some more counter steer happening. Some more tires screeching if we listen. You can hear the sound of the rubber. I always have it cranked up. So I just get a better idea of exactly what the car is doing. See the car. You can just visually see it's not gripping as well as it was in the, the opening stages of this race. And this is where you see it the most. You'll see how these two rights go. Look at that, just trying to battle the car. That's getting wild and that's getting slow. The biggest problem with how that last lap, with how that last corner was, is that one, it's a crucial one to get right for the exit. But you can see, like every time we're getting wild and loose like that, if he does a good corner, we're definitely losing time. Look in the rear vision. He is now one, he's half a second away. Three laps to go. Under braking, we're seeing a very shiny Porsche Carrera bonnet. No, it's not a, is it Carrera? Porsche <laughs> Cup car, we'll stick it with that. Every time under braking now, trying not to let it phase you as it comes close into the rear vision. Loose coming into the braking zone. Car sliding around, somehow he, he just keeps it so planted. His setup, I don't know if it's just his driving style, his setup, he just is so stable there. It's been a problematic section for us this whole race, in comparison. Trying to battle a very powerful, tractionless it feels like at times, Porsche race car here. Now we gained a tiny bit of room on him there, just, just the ever so slightest breathing room. If you live your life in half seconds, <laughs> tenth of seconds. The whole race is coming down to this moment. We have two more laps to go. After a race that's seen so much handed to us, so much drama for everyone else, and somehow we've just slipped right on through it and been the benefactor from, from everyone. Like one of the luckiest drivers in this race. I would say. Not lucky, we've just been in the right place at the right time. There was no near misses or anything. It was just nice, consistent laps. But some smart driving has seen the man behind us with one and a half laps left to the end of this race be in the ultimate position. Driving ever so strategic, showing just really, really good driving, good braking, and probably watching us in first place, just sliding around, trying to hold it together. It's just so good being in that 
attacking position, isn't it? Like, racing when you're defending is so stressful. You're trying to analyse what they're going to do, when they're going to do it. Keep them as far away as possible, but everything, including the slipstream, etc., doesn't want that to happen. We're on the last lap. He's 0.3 away. You can dive bomb into any of these corners at 0.3 away, 0.2 away. We're watching him. He looks like he's going to tap us on the bumper. But he doesn't go for it. We try and get a good exit, but it's a little bit bumpy. You've got about two laps of fuel left. And the ultimate passing corner on the last lap is here. We defend. He decides to not go for it, but now we have the exit to worry about is his will probably be better. We're closing the door. We're going to make him go the long way around if he wants this win. The hardest braking zone in this track. Slow it right down. Give him the space, but somehow he doesn't go with it, but he's still got time. He's good on this part. He's got a different line. We lose it. We're sliding. We're sliding. My foot is cramping at this stage. I remember also. That's what I said to my brother on the microphone, which means we just really made a huge mistake there. Now, it's hard to pass the last two corners, but he's going to have the pace. Two corners to go. Tires are gone. We're getting off track. Who cares? Hold on to it. Throws it into the last corner. And he gets all squirrely, nearly bins it himself, and we take the win. You won. You just toyed with these people today. So, now let's look at the races. Stressful coming down. He probably deserved it in second. And my starts are always quite good in these. I've just got a pretty basic... I don't know why it has frame issues. It's only in the recording. The race did not have this, so just bear with that. There we go. Gone wide. Smash two, three, four cars. Slip through the middle. Could have easily been into an accident there. Just like these guys. There we are. That's our livery right in front. That uh, interesting blue color. Just carnage happening in front of us, happening behind us. And luckily, just always be in the right place, right time. Difficult braking point, and that's what happens when you're just a bit too heavy on the brakes. In the replay, you just hear my brother, we're just watching the crashes back. Because he went left, he tried to go a bit wider while breaking. Oof. Getting rough here, just to show him the shoulder. Just these cars, they're so rewarding to drive because they're so wild. But, you need to keep in mind that they are so wild. Like, look, no stability, or do they have stability? I don't know. I know they don't have traction. And I know they like to do burnouts and spin their tires. Oof. Yeah, this is the leader at this stage, and this is how he goes super wide. Caught way too much curb. How he doesn't have a slowdown is very, very lucky. Seeing this guy was just all over us this whole race. Now, if he was uh, looking back, if he was a bit more aggressive, I mean, he he slipped through, made some good passes. If he would have just sent it down the inside of us, oh, that hurts. And this is where they're all just the losing fuck? it. Someone's having a hissy fit, it looks like. Now think, oh, that was mean. That was rough. And Karma come back to get him. That's what happened. Yeah, 
Yes, this is the guy that I uh, end up leaving in this event. So he's pushing too hard, the pressure got to him, too much pedal. When the car's not settled. Uh. Slams it in second. Really bad. Yeah. Really bad to do. Here's all unfolded, so... Currently we're in second. The old Darry dive bomb here. Locks of brakes. And it's almost like instant karma, isn't it? Oh... Just how lucky we are to avoid all that. And now it's on again. So this was the first place. And look, these guys are literally three wide going into turn two, three here. What's going to happen? I heard a door bang then. They hit in the back. Oh. Did you hear that? Just drives in. Huh. Almost looks like that was done on purpose, wasn't it? So, the temper getting the best of him. That was a fast turn to there. If you hit it, hit it right. Oh! The mightiest of all lockups. I haven't seen one like that for a while. That's just, just hard lock on the tire. Hard skid. Oh, too much juice. Too much pedal there. He's had yep. one race, this <laughs> Rothman's Porsche. And facing backwards more than forwards. Still more instants to go. Oh. Okay, that's rough. Oh. And we're still going. The Porsche Cup. Just get in the better of everyone, isn't it? Fucking hell. I swear, your cunts crash harder than fucking... And here is the last couple laps to go where he caught us. He's just so smooth, isn't he? That's where I was watching it back. Especially under that corner there is where he just seems to really give us a lot of drama. Oh, Rothmans is back. He's just a bit too heavy on the brakes, I think. Nice uh, 360. Oh. He saved it. He saved it. And there it is. Let's so have a quick look over how that last couple laps went and what really was happening in the eyes of second place, the Hunter. They just couldn't make it happen. Like when a tiger's chasing a deer or something, it just gets away. Like, look how close he is. And watch the last final two laps. The ever so crucial exits. Which he's done quite well there. Big draft zone here now. Just watch. Just stare at us and watch him get ever so closer. Ever so closer. Especially on the brakes. Interesting line. Very interesting line from him. Very narrow, but he just seems to do it so well. Under braking, etc. Here's a crucial one that uh, seems to be better at the whole race. Again, tighter line. And it just works for him. So if it works, it works. Keep doing it.
Now we're going to cross the line here. Just, you just imagine being in this position. One lap to go, this close. No third, fourth, fifth place to worry about. It's just you two. You're the attacker. Trying to just make that last final push. In which he has every every opportunity to here, doesn't he? Like, once we get past the frame rate. Look how close he is coming in turn one. I remember seeing this. He's on my bumper. Good exit. Less bumpy than ours. All the draft. This is the corner to do it on. Last lap. We're just going to stick it on the inside to defend. You know what I'm saying? Alonso, because uh, Hungering had just happened. Verstappen versus Alonso. Now that was a late one. I didn't try to make any sudden movements at any of these times. I didn't want to have a crash. But I knew where I wanted to be. Oh, he went wide. That's what it was. He had the win right there. If he would have held the closer line to us. Because he would have been the inside into his double lefts. And I wouldn't have been able to hold on to it. But here we have the foot cramp. Toe cramp. I need to start wearing race boots. <laughs> we get it all wrong. And all of a sudden the opportunity is back again. Punches the throttle. Oh, and there it is. Thanks for watching.